Welcome to Grace United Methodist Church as we bring worship to you because the bishop and the governor wisely have said during this time of a national crisis, we should not have in-person gatherings for worship. But wherever two or three are gathered together, Christ is with us. And I trust wherever you are watching this, that Christ is with you. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship and join together in hymn number 280, the Palm Sunday hymn, All Glory, Loud and Honor. to hear that organ playing so loud and clear the the all the stops out it is good to worship together in our gospel reading today is Matthew 21 1 through 16 as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives Jesus sent two disciples saying to them go to the village ahead of you 
and at once you will find a donkey tied there and her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying, they said? Yes, replied Jesus, have you ever read from the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise? This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna. That didn't seem like a very fun Palm Sunday parade, Mrs. Hendrickson. I know. Well, there's just two of us. We need more people. Are there any more people around here? I know. We miss our kids. We need to get replacements. Come on, guys. Help us out here with this, this Palm Sunday parade. We need some more people. We're going to try it again. Hosanna. Hosanna. Can I be Hosanna. Jesus? Sure. Okay, here we go. Let's try it again, guys. Hosanna! 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 Blessed is he! Blessed Hosanna! Welcome he comes in the name Hosanna. of the Lord. Wow. <laughs> oh, that was so much better. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, that was much better. So, so, so Jesus came in on a donkey. That yes. doesn't seem very majestic for a king. I know, it doesn't, does it? But, you know, he didn't want to come as one of the kings that they normally come into the town. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem, he wanted to make sure that the people knew that he came in peace and that he was one of them. He didn't want to make them feel like he was above them. So he rode in on a gentle donkey. Do you think they had ribbons that they waved at him like that? Mm, they might have, but I doubt it. But they had the palms because where Jesus lived, they didn't have trees like we have here. They had tons of palm trees. And so because the roads were all covered in dirt and they weren't nice like we have today, they would lay the palm branches down in front of anyone special that was coming into the city. So they did this in front of Jesus. They might even laid a coat or a shawl if they didn't have a palm branch so that Jesus and his donkey wouldn't get dirty. And that was why we have Palm Sunday today. And Palm Sunday, this is the beginning of Holy Week. Right, Mrs. Hendrickson. So the people that were shouting their loud hosannas today were singing a different tune at the end of the week. They were doing things that made Jesus sad, and they were saying things that were very mean to Jesus. But we do have things to look forward to. We've got Easter coming, the resurrection of him, next Sunday. So we celebrate Holy Week this week. Get your palms out, wave them around today, sing your shout, your, out, your loud hosannas. And then next week we get to celebrate Easter together. Will you guys pray with me? And everyone can join in. 
Dear Father, Dear Father, Father, our voices join with the voices of the people in Jerusalem. Our voices join with the voices of the people in Jerusalem. Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He is our hope and our salvation. He is our hope and our salvation. And in his name we pray. And in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Filled with excitement, all the happy throng spread cloaks and branches on the city streets. There in the distance they begin to see, there on a donkey comes the Savior Christ. From every corner a thousand voices sing, praise to the one who comes in the name of God. Our acclamation breaks forth in shouts of praise, our triumphant Song of joy, Hosanna, Hosanna to Christ, Hosanna, Hosanna to Christ. As in that entrance to Jerusalem, Hosannas we will sing to Jesus Christ. Our Redeemer who still calls today Asks us to follow with our love and faith From every corner a thousand voices sing Praise to the one who comes in the name of God Our acclamation breaks forth in shouts of praise Our triumphant song of joy Thank you, Joe. What a blessing. And it is always wonderful to have Joe Smith with us singing. Have you ever been to an event that involved an opening ceremony with the release of doves? It's a wondrous thing to see. Uh, they once closed the Olympics that way. As the doves are, are flying forth, they don't just take off, go off on their own. They circle overhead until the whole flock joins together, circling around buildings, through the stadium, over the heads of the crowd. On Palm Sunday, Jesus closed the triumphal entry into Jerusalem that way. Imagine those doves flying through the open pillars of the temple after Jesus overturned the benches of the money changers and those who were selling doves. The cages obviously would have broken. The doves would have flown away. And they would have flown just as they do at the Olympics in a circle until the whole flock was together free. And then perhaps off to the hill and the Mount of Olives to hide in the trees, much like the doves did in the story of Noah. To this day, that has been a symbol of life and of peace. And since the image originates with the story of Noah and the ark, you can bet that it was a symbol of life and peace during the time of Jesus as well. This is the week in Jesus' life where the Messiah comes head to head with people's image of 
what they thought the Messiah should be, which didn't always correspond to what Jesus knew he came for. A lot of the people thought that the Messiah was supposed to come in riding on that donkey's colt, but then go into the sanctuary of the temple, the Holy of Holies itself, and make a sacrifice on the altar. One of those poor doves, perhaps, splitting its breast and throwing it into the fire. But that's not what Jesus did. He set the doves free. He set them free. Then, according to the popular theology of the day, many people thought that the Messiah was going to go out and lead them in the slaughter of the Romans and wiping the Gentiles out from Israel. Perhaps he'd even slay them with the same knife he used to sacrifice the dove. But Jesus didn't go into the Holy of Holies. He went to the Gentile court and he cleared it of those money changers so the Gentiles could get in, saying, my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations, the Jews, the Greeks, the Romans, everybody who wants in. They're welcome, and I'm here to make them free, like the doves. The doves set free. What an image for Christianity. In Galatians 5.1, Paul proclaims, it is for the sake of freedom that Christ has set you free. Specifically, within the context that Paul was speaking, he was saying that God accepts you as you are, for who you are. Galatians is about people of every nationality being accepted by God without first having to become like some other group of people. And then Paul goes on to apply that concept, not just to a freedom to be who you are culturally and nationally, but that all people are then called to be free from sin and death through Jesus. You know, when I think of the lives the gospel of Christ has turned around, people on drugs who found the strength to change, people who had ruined their reputation with a lie or a crime or an act of violence, and who found the power to turn their lives around. I can think of no better image for this than doves flying free. One of my favorite movies has always been The Sound of Music. In it, you have the story of children who are being set free from a tyrannical existence by Maria, a nun, along with the story of Maria being set free herself, free to be who she was. And and the movie is a great story, but like so many movies that propose to be about real people, it doesn't represent anything at all like what really took place. Indeed, the movie was so unlike the real story that the producers barred Maria von Trapp Trapp, from being anywhere near its filming, lest she let people know before the film's release that her life was not like the fairy tale in the movie at all. Maria von Trapp wrote an autobiography. Its title is simply Maria. In it, Maria paints a very different picture than what is painted by the movie, The Sound of Music. To make a long story short, just let me lift up a couple points. She married Baron von Trapp for his money. She liked the kids and grew to love them, but not him. He was her ticket out of the convent, which she had joined not because she wanted to be a nun, but because she needed food and shelter during what was a worldwide Great Depression. When the Nazis took over Austria and attempted to get Baron von Trapp to assume command in the uh, Australian Navy, they left 
Austria because he insisted that they must, that Nazism and his faith in Jesus Christ did not go together, and that money and the mansion meant nothing to him compared to his honor and his faith. Maria wanted to stay. They arrived in New York with $4 in their pocket after having fled their home. Maria never let her husband forget that he took her away from the luxury of being a baroness and made her sing for a living. In the movie, the baron did not want to demean himself by singing in public. In reality, it was Maria. And I quote directly from the book now. After my husband's death, I went through a time of terrible struggles. I relived my entire married life. I had thrown things across the room at him and yelled at the top of my voice. My poor husband just stood in stunned silence, and he would need days to get over the hurt. There wasn't a city in the United States where I wondered if I might not have been nasty or ugly to my husband. For hours, I would just sit near his grave, begging his pardon and forgiveness. Gladly, I would have dug him up with my own hands if I could have made him alive again, giving me another chance. But it was too late. The thought, it was too late, would haunt me for some time. Years later, when I was at a worship service, and you'll find this quite interesting, Years later, while I was at a worship service at the University of Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana, there was this invitation to awaken to Jesus and make a personal, person-to-person commitment. In Austria, confirmation means a new wristwatch, a good dinner. And somewhere in the middle, church, but it won't take too long, At that worship service, I suddenly realized the need for a personal commitment. And that morning, I did just that. What a change. I was filled with a tremendous love, love to God and to everybody on earth. Such deep peace and joy. I had never felt that in my life before. It was not starry-eyed emotionalism. It was the true thing. Peace, shalom, and nothing could disturb it. It was really that peace of which Jesus said the world cannot give it. And one could add, the world cannot take it away. End quote. Can you see the doves flying? The film, The Sound of Music, begins with the image of Maria almost flying as she's singing on the mountaintops. In reality, that came closer to the end of her life, when she found Jesus right here in South Bend at the University of Notre Dame. (laughs) Jesus Christ sets people free, no matter who they are or what their past was like. And when he does, we are like the doves who flew out of their cages and soared to the heights. You know, sometime after Jesus cleared the Gentile court, he returned and gave this parable, the parable of the two sons. Listen to it. There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, said the son. But later the son changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. And that son answered, I will, sir. But he didn't go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, of course. And then Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. You were shown the way of righteousness, but did not believe. But the tax collectors and prostitutes did believe. Gentiles, tax collectors, in league with Rome, prostitutes, doves. (laughs) He set them free. Imagine those doves in flight, making the skies above Jerusalem beautiful. Imagine the freedom people have found in their lives, freedom from sin, freedom from negative 
images opposed, imposed on them by others, freedom which comes from realizing that God loves you and calls you just as you are. Imagine the beauty which filled the streets of Jerusalem by the people who knew such love, beauty in the streets with the beauty of the doves flying overhead. That's the image we celebrate for Holy Week and how it begins. An image of spiritual freedom, freedom from sin and death, sealed for eternity with a sacrament on Thursday, a cross on Friday, a tomb on Saturday, a resurrection on Sunday. As Christians, our future is to live out the beauty this coming week of what all that represents. And so may God bless you, like the doves, bless you so that you can be free from all that would keep you from living life abundant, a beautiful life. My prayer is that during this time of social separation, as we seek to stay free from the coronavirus, that we might also discover all of the freedoms offered to us through Christ. Amen. Will you pray with me? Gracious Redeemer, it is freedom that you give. It is freedom that you offer. And we pray that it's also that freedom that we can accept. But I wonder... Lord God, are you ever amazed at our responses to your presence? Are you pleased with our excitement over a parade into Jerusalem? Do you ever chuckle a little as we relive those moments when all the people were so excited because their Messiah was coming to make things right? we could stay at this scene forever and enjoy that moment. But you call us from that moment. We're called forward through the gates of the holy city to the temple, from the temple to the cross. Please be with us as we face the reality of life. Grant us the courage to face what lies ahead and strengthen our faith that we will remain steadfast during the trials we encounter. Be with the health care workers. Give them strength for the tasks of caring for the sick. Not just the sick from our current pandemic, but for all the normal illnesses that must be treated as well. Be with the depressed who hate being separated from loved ones and friends. Be with the church. Show us how to best be your hands and feet in the world today. Lord, each of us have concerns and joys, prayers, words of thanksgiving that we offer to you. I encourage us to think about those for a moment and lift them up. And Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' name as we join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, 
and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Carrie. All of our members know that during a regular service, when we're together, we pass a collection plate. We can't do that now. And so to our members, I remind you that you could still give through our webpage electronically or by putting something in the mail. And that would be very appreciated during this time where uh, we cannot be together so that we can continue our ministries. And then to everyone, if you would like to give to help the community, uh, we are collecting food. We have baskets at the front door. Someone will be here from 9 to 4, Monday through Friday. You just push a buzzer, you come in, put your things in the basket, and leave so we can keep that social separation. We are collecting for the Broadway Christian Parish and La Casa, the Hispanic ministry here in South Bend, alternating weeks on which food pantry gets the food. And then you can also make masks for our health care providers, Beacon Health Systems, which runs Memorial Hospital, has asked churches to do that, and there are instructions on how to do that on our website. And now, may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.